Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Faith and Love Fellowship. We are delighted to have you. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming out. To our praise team, thank you so much. Amen. The whole purpose of our service is, is to build up the body of Christ. Amen. It's to uh, honor God, to uh, not only put our focus on him, but keep our focus on him. Amen. And then to encourage you and, and uh, comfort you and, and uh, appreciate you. Amen. Hallelujah. And finally, because I'm a pastor, to challenge you. Hallelujah. To, to go further, to go higher, to go closer. And to, uh, to honor him. Amen. Let's pray together before we start. Lord, we thank you for the day. This is a beautiful, wonderful day. What a precious gift. Every day, every moment, every hour. Precious, precious, precious. Thank you. Our whole purpose and desire here today is to honor you. And have you manifest yourself. Hallelujah. In this place. In every heart. In every home. Through the internet. To those that are watching today. You said you inhabit the praise of your people. So our intention to give you praise give you a platform in which you can manifest yourself amongst us. We thank you that you are with us no matter where we go, living in our hearts, that you have made us new creations in Christ Jesus. But we just want to see you. We want to feel you. We want to know you. We want to experience you. We want your, 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 your presence in our midst, oh God. We thank you for it, and uh, we honor you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hey, think back on the day that you got saved. Was it a good day? Amen. Yes. Was it an amazing day? I believe it was. It was for me, that's for sure. Hallelujah. So we're going to sing about that day. Are you ready, everybody?
have saved me. What a glorious day. What a glorious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
we know that we are more than conquerors. You keep us by your love. We're covered by your blood. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then come on, say this with me. He keeps me by his love. He keeps me by his love. I'm covered by his blood. I'm covered by his blood. And in all things, I know that I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. To him who loved me and gave himself for me. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. God forever. Amen. That was worth coming to church for. Amen. Praise God forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise God forever. Amen. To meet with God. To experience His presence. Praise God forever. You know, not to be hyper spiritual, that's not the intent whatsoever. But the other night when we were practicing, um, Loretta was singing, and I was singing softly behind her, and I felt a shiver go down my spine. Because I looked over at Mark, and his mouth wasn't moving. I looked over at Andrew, and his mouth wasn't moving. But I told him afterwards, and it just kept this rippling effect down my spine. Because I heard another male voice. Yeah, loud we heard it and too. Clear. Amen. And it was so wonderful and so powerful. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. And so don't be surprised if he just decides he wants to sing along. Amen. Hallelujah. He sings over us. He rejoices over us with singing, the Bible says. Amen. So God bless you. Hallelujah. Enjoy your birthday party. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Amen. Hallelujah. So before we get into the word of God as we continue the service today, let's take a look in our bulletins and uh, always keep a bulletin uh, around so you can contact us if you need to. On the back is our mailing address, is our physical address, uh, also our phone numbers if you need us. And um, here is some, um, some things that are going on in the church. Hallelujah. Our service is on the left-hand side. Uh, some of the interesting things you'll find on the right-hand side. You can go to Facebook.com, Faith and Love Fellowship, and watch all the pre-recorded services there, both my son and my son Nick, and uh, myself and my son Nick. And then you can go on YouTube, Faith and Love Fellowship, and see them listed there as well. We are in the, um, in the uh, process of uploading directly to YouTube, so it will be available right after the service. Okay? Hallelujah. Um, the the uh, um, scripture reading this morning, Mark chapter 9, verse 7, from the New Living Testament, Then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly loved son. Listen to him. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Um, Praise God. Amen. We, we would say we listen to you, Lord. Amen. You're, you're, you're the one who has the, the number one influence in our lives. And we, we thank you and we worship you that, that we have the honor and the privilege of hearing your voice. Amen. Uh, St. Augustine quotes, remember this, when people choose to withdraw far from a fire, the fire continues to give warmth. But they grow cold. When people choose to withdraw far from light, the light continues to be bright in itself, but they are in darkness. This is also the case when people withdraw from God. Amen? 
And so, you know, the safest place, the best place we can ever be is as close to God as we possibly can. Amen? Hallelujah. And then there's a quote on the bottom right from Charles Stanley. The Bible re reveals the Father's overall plan for the world and provides general guidelines for life. But how can we know his specific plans for us? Listening to God is essential to walking with God. And it's the truth. Amen? Listening, spending time in his presence, hearing his voice. Amen? That, that uh, none of us expected it, um, but when that, that male voice chimed in with us, it was just such a great, tremendous blessing, life-giving. Years ago, there was a uh, revival meeting going on, and, and um, there was a specific song that was, uh, that was being lifted up to God, to heaven. Amen? And, uh, and they recorded it. And um, it was uh, a few people, and they were singing, and then it sounded like a whole chorus behind them, a whole, a whole ensemble of, of voices appeared behind them. And everybody in the place was looking around to find out where the, these voices were coming from. And, and, and the consensus we get was that, that heaven uh, was joining in. Amen. Don't think it's strange, my brothers and sisters. He's done it before. Remember? When Jesus was born, the angel appeared. And he said, good news, glad tidings. The Savior has been born. And then he was joined with a heavenly host singing, glory to God in the highest. Amen? Hallelujah. So uh, don't think it's strange when, when uh, God appears and, and, and joins in our worship. Hallelujah. He inhabits the praise of our worship. He loves when we are worshiping him. You know why? He doesn't need it, but it's because our hearts are turned towards him. Because our, our focus is not on ourselves or on our stuff, but it's on him. And, he, and he's blessed by that. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So when we're in worship, we're not thinking about what's in it for me, or what's going to happen, what's going on later, or, or how am I going to deal with this situation or that situation. God's got you. Amen? You just worship him, bless him, honor him, and he will work out all the details for you. Glory to God. Amen? Yeah. Praise God forever. So these are here for you, these uh, these. Um, uh, scriptures and these quotes, uh, hold on to them. There's space in the back of the bulletin to take notes and uh, use it as you like to. Write down what the Spirit of God says to you. Amen. And uh, we're going to continue with our offering, with our worship, with our giving. Amen. The giving of our, our tithes and offerings. If you are writing a check, it is Faith Without Fellowship. If you would like to give online securely, you just go to our website, www.fellowship.com wlf.com and there you can give through a ministry called Tidely. It's secure, it's safe and um, and then um, uh, we appreciate your faithfulness and your giving. Amen? Hallelujah. We're going to uh, lift our offerings and we're going to offer their, our praises and our, and our worship to God. Amen? And I said the first slide is that's exactly what we're doing. The next three slides is what God desires to do into your life. So get a hold of them. I've encouraged you before, even take a snapshot on your phone if you have the ability, or write them down because you need to be declaring this over your life. Amen? Hallelujah. How many know God is not legalistic, but God is righteous? And if you do what he has expect, told you and commanded you to do, you have a legal right to the blessing that accompanies that obedience. Amen? And so when we give, and we give uh, in faith, and, and we give in sincerity and integrity, then God will do what he says, and you have a legal right to it. So let's stand together, let's recite our first, uh, uh, the first slide, and then, and then really focus on the next three that come, and get a hold of them. Amen? Ready? This is my seed. I, I sow it into the kingdom, kingdom of God. God. I, I sow because I love God. God and want to see faith with our fellowship continue to fulfill what God has called us to do. I believe that as I sow my seed, it shall be given unto me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It shall come back to me in many ways. I thank you, Lord, for good opportunities coming my way. I thank you that the windows of heaven are open because of my obedience to sow my seed. I thank you, Lord, for the favor of God upon my life 
and the and grace to prosper as you have promised me in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give. Hallelujah. We have a lovely, beautiful uh, usherette this morning. We appreciate her. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Our daughter Rebecca, of course. Hallelujah. Just stretch your hand out towards this offering. Father, we believe everything that we just said. And we thank you that you watch over your word to perform it in our lives. We will declare it. We will speak it. We will believe it. We will expect it. Because you promised. We're not trying to get you to do something you don't want to do. It is your promise. You are the one who initiated blessing and prosperity and victory. So we thank you and praise you for it. We receive it humbly but with grateful hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. All right. Well, where we left off uh, last time, we were talking about convinced but not yielding. So we spoke about for about three weeks, I guess. Convinced but not yielding. And we did a study from the life of uh, Daniel, and we did a study from the three Hebrew children, and uh, we studied out uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, who was given three major revelations of God, and yet he refused to yield. And uh, then also his son, Belteshazzar, the same thing. He was given, he probably was alive or at least heard of everything that happened in the kingdom before with his father. And yet, what did he do? He decided to throw a huge party for his friends. And they basically took all the holy vessels from the tabernacle and used them uh, to get drunk and to, and to have a, a horrible, you know, orgy and all the rest of it. And as they were in the middle of it, declaring how great our kingdom is and look at what I have done, a hand appeared and wrote on the wall, you've been weighed in the balance and you've been found wanting. And that night his, his life was, was forfeit. And, you know, did God do that? Uh, no, he did that. Are you listening? Are you with me? Hallelujah. And, and so that night the, the, uh, he was killed and the Medes and the Persians took over. Uh, that area, it used to be, you know, Babylon, and they took it over. And, um, and now we, we see the story of Daniel and the lion's den. And Darius is the king at this time, and Darius is uh, open. He, is, he, he's, he becomes convinced when Daniel comes out of the lion's den, uh, and then he yields. Then he acknowledges that there, there is no God like the God of Daniel, and he makes a decree that all of us must receive him because he is the one true and living God. They turn from their idols and they worship God. Amen. When Jonah came to Nineveh, they were horrible idol worshipers and their actions were horrible, horrible. And Jonah came and said that if you stay, basically my paraphrase, if you stay the way you are, judgment is going to come upon all of you. And the people took the message, realized they had offended God, realized that their, their idols were, were nothing but but man-made creations, demonic uh, things to distract them and take them away from, from the one to service of the one true and living God. And they had digressed so long, and that's the process. You get away from God, you get cold, it's dark. Are you with me? Lonely and bitter and all these other things. So they had found that they were, you know, but they thought, you know, we're prosperous. We're a mighty kingdom. We, we've got it made. We've got everything we need. But they, were, they realized that we have nothing. We, 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 can, we have, you know, wealth and we have, and we have prosperity and we have, you know, uh, victory, but we don't have what really matters. We don't have God. Amen. And they repented. The Bible says they repented with sackcloth and ashes, all of them, from the king right on down. And, and so they, they, they became convinced and then they yielded. And God turned the judgment to blessing. Amen. The judgment that they were calling upon because of their behavior, because they repented, God was able to turn it around. Amen? The Word of God says that my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. And you all know that we need God's healing in our land. Amen? 
Very much so. But notice what he said. If my people, who are called by my name, Christians, will humble themselves and pray, listen, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. It's very important. The repentance, the turning from the wickedness, is how you show that you're yielding. It's not a matter of just being convinced. It's a matter of then yielding. When you heard the gospel that happy day, when you heard the gospel and, and finally it got to you and it touched your heart and you, you realized your need for the Savior, you, were, you, were, you got to the point where you were convinced. But then you yielded. Are you with me? I know back in the day when I was searching for God or he was searching for me more than anything, but uh, when I, I finally heard and I, I got an opportunity to go to a place where the gospel was preached and they explained to me why that, you know, 12 foot cross in, on the wall with a man hanging on it what, it, what it had to do with me. You know, I'd been in the church for so long and I saw that big statue and Jesus and I didn't fully understand it. And for me, it was, you know, get in, go out. It was full of an obligation. But I got to a point in my life where I didn't want to just do it for the sake of going. And so uh, I, I found a, a place that, that would teach me and help me to understand. And when I realized that, that Jesus gave his life so that I can be free, it opened up a whole new world to me. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, I uh, thought of something the other day, and it's been such a blessing. I've been on a focus with, with God that um, we have to realize that these things that we sometimes take for granted um, that they are not ethereal, uh, emotional they're not psychological um, it, it's, it's God working in our lives. For instance, comfort and hope and, um, and, uh, and, and strength and courage and compassion, and uh, health, and healing, and blessings, prosperity, unexpected blessings. Come. It's all the work of God in our lives, amen? And, and so what I've been saying to myself, and I share with you, that you know, love is, is not an emotion that comes and goes. Love is not an ethereal, you know, philosophical thing. Love is a person. Real, true love is a person. Amen? God is love. Love is God. So true love, perfect love, agape love, selfless love is a person. And his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Strength is a person. And he says, come unto me, O those who are weak and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. That rest is, is, a, is, is a rest, but it's also a strengthening, a comforting, an encouragement. Amen? And so I was thinking about it the other day, and uh, you know, and, and everything. When you talk about hope as a person, can we really put our, our all of our hope in anything else? We really can't. We're going to be disappointed. But hope is a person, and when we put our hope and our trust in Him, Amen. He will satisfy us. He says, "Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be satisfied." Amen. He's everything we have need of. He's, he's the beginning, he's the end, he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's everything in between, amen? He's the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He's a person, the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? And, and I shared uh, that, you know, there was a song back days, I don't know if you remember the song, done by, um, by a farmer uh, called, I Want to Know What Love Is and I Want You to Show Me. I don't know if you remember the song, but uh, it was very, very popular back in, the, I guess, in the 70s and 80s and all. And, and uh, I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. And uh, without realizing it, I began to think about it. And, and uh, I believe God revealed to me that that's exactly what the Lord Jesus did. Amen? The question of I want to know what love is, and I want you to show me. Well, God came in human form and was born in a humble manger so that he can identify with every human being on the planet. 
and then he lived a sinless life to show us the way to live. Then he went to the cross of Calvary to take upon himself the penalty that we all deserve. Are you with me? I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. And so love is a person demonstrated in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And of course it doesn't end there. Because he rose from the dead. Amen? And when he rose, he brought victory to all who would believe him. All who would ask him to come into their lives, to be a part of who they are. Amen? And, and when we do, when they do, when we all do, amen, love, amen? The Bible says the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart. Love moves into your heart. Jesus comes into your heart. Amen? But so does strength, and so does health, and so does victory, and glory, hallelujah, comes in to be with you forever. He says, I'll never leave you, I'll never fail you, I'll never forsake you. Who's there? Jesus. But who, who is he? He's love. Amen? He's power, he's glory, he's victory. Not been given a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Why? Because I invited the one who is all wise and all powerful. Amen? And so now we can say with confidence, in all things, we know that we are more than conquerors. Amen? Because of receiving victory himself into our lives. Amen? Glory to God. And so, you know, I, I, I humbly, you know, submit to you. I think about it. It blesses me very much. I want to know what love is. Well, that's what love is. And when you accept the gift of salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ, it is because you have a revelation of who love is. And you received him. You yielded. And then you want to tell other people, let me tell you how he showed me what love is. Amen? He showed me by, by, by revealing to me love that I can't hardly even comprehend. That he was willing to do this for me. And let me tell you about how wonderful he is and how kind he is and how, how um, I would so much love to pray with you to, and for you to invite him into your heart and to change your life. Amen? It's very real, isn't it? It's not, there's no, you don't have to worry about becoming a fisher of men. You don't have to worry about witnessing. You just need to be so, so in touch with the feeling that I'm so grateful for him hearing my prayer, moving into my heart. Amen? And he says, abundant life. Hallelujah. Eternal life is the byproduct of, of inviting him into your heart. And, and eternal life doesn't start when you die. Eternal life starts the moment you embrace him. Life and life more abundantly is living inside of you. Amen? He's a person. Amen? Hallelujah. So I hope you, you know, you begin to, to consider these things that, you know, they're not just things. They're not just, you know, things. It's, it's, it's God doing what he said he would do in our lives. So um, be appreciative, be grateful, and, and uh, you know, acknowledge him. You know, the Bible says acknowledge him in all, in all your ways. He, he will order your, your uh, he will direct your path. He will, he will make your way straight. Glory to God. It is the greatest um, blessing we could ever receive to receive life himself in, into our hearts. And uh, we are so grateful for that. Amen? Hope that blesses you, helps you. So uh, we talked about convinced but not yielding. And we saw through the life of Darius that Darius uh, yielded. And then we, I asked the question, do you know what true Christianity is? And I, I answered it last week, knowing him for yourself. What an amazing gift. What an amazing opportunity, a blessing. It's hard to describe. Yet I can know him for myself. I can know love. I can know peace. Peace is a person. A lot of people looking for peace, but it's not found horizontally. It's not. 
I mean, I know a lot of folks are looking for peace and, and they try to find it through a lot of the things that are out there. Mysticism and, and all kinds of other things and uh, the chanting and all the rest and all. I, I want you to know the peace of God is not found there. You might, you know, tranquility, certain amount of, a certain amount of quiet, I guess, but peace that passes all understanding, no. Peace like a river that overwhelms you and just lifts you and builds you up and strengthens you. You can't find it anywhere but in Him. Amen? He's, it's a person. Who, he is one of his, you know, one of his titles to try to help us. He's the Prince of Peace. Amen? He is peace. He is strength. He is comfort. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Are you with me? So, true Christianity is not steps or rules or regulations but faith in God faith in who he says he is who he is what he's like what he's done what he will do amen hallelujah glory to God so we went to many scriptures we talked about Jeremiah 1 12 I am ready to perform my word for I will hasten my word to perform it for I am alert and active watching over my word to perform it. And then verse 12 of that verse, Isaiah, over Jeremiah, uh, no, Isaiah, it was Isaiah 55, um, is confidence. And then confidence. I'm going to turn there quickly because I don't want to overlook it. Isaiah 55, I don't think I, I referenced it in my preaching, but then I want to get on to some more uh, things that God has put on my heart to share with you today. Uh, Isaiah um, 55. And... Uh, if you can turn there, it would be great. Take a look at it. Isaiah 55, verse 11 through 13. He says, for, uh, um, let's see. Amen. We, we talked about this last week. Amen. Uh, verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. But I told you, we can think his thoughts. We can walk in his ways. Amen? It's all given to us here in the word of God. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen? But when we spend time in the word of God, we're thinking his thoughts. And let them renew your mind, like our scripture says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove by your own experience what is the perfect, good, beautiful, wonderful will of God. Amen? And there's nothing like the will of God to know that you are in the will of God. Amen? Hallelujah. It brings such peace. It brings such fulfillment. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so then he goes on and he says here in verse 10, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. For you shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace, the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up a fir tree, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Amen? Hallelujah. And so the byproduct, verse 12 says, For you shall walk with joy and be led forth with peace, the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. That's talking about confidence. Amen? How can you have such abandoned joy in the midst of troubles and trials, tribulations, difficulties, and all? Because you have confidence in God. Amen? And the Word of God, I mean, I, I, I challenge you to do a study on that word confidence. There are many scriptures in the Bible that talk about the Lord is my confidence. Amen? Amen? Don't 
Don't give up your confidence. Don't, don't, don't hand it away. Don't, don't uh, uh, compromise it. Are you with me? Don't cast away your confidence. For in keeping it, what's it say there is great reward. Not just reward, but great reward. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me uh, see very quickly for your benefit. Let's see if I can find it. Hebrews 10.35. Thank you for quick quotes. Hebrews 10.35. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Amen? Now it's very hard to just pull a scripture out because he's talking about something in, in this. He says, For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Amen? The answer is not always immediate. It requires faith. And sometimes patience. Amen? But you continue to declare, but I know in whom I believe. Amen? And I know that he will do what he says he will do. And I will not compromise. I will not waver in my faith. I will not uh, overrule him with my thoughts or the thoughts of other people. Amen? Come on. It, it's about life. It's about talking and, 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 and dealing with, with a person who, who absolutely loves you. Glory to God. Amen? And it says here, um, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. For we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And Hebrews 11, now faith is. And it gives us examples of, of people who, who operated in this faith. Amen? And, and faith is not an ethereal, you know, consideration or some kind of an emotional thing. It's not a force or a power. It's a person. Amen? And when your faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ, He is the power. He is the victory. Amen. He turns your mourning into dancing. He, he answer, hears and answers prayers. You believe you receive when you pray. That's what we're talking about today. So you say it. And you keep saying it. And you don't quit. Well, what happens if it doesn't happen immediately? You don't, it doesn't move you. You're a person of faith. Amen. Faith in God. Not faith, you know, faith, i got to build my faith. No. How does faith come? By hearing the Word. The Word of God builds your faith in Him. Builds your confidence in Him. Hallelujah. Many times, you know, when Nick went to Thailand, I believe it was, he said, he, he, you know, through an interpreter, you can't even say Jesus. Not that you can't. It's not that. But you, they don't know who Jesus is. So you say Jesus, and they look at you like, Okay, is that a person, is that a name? What is Jesus? And so you've got to go through and explain to them, give them the, the, the plan of salvation, help them understand that Jesus is God incarnate. Amen. And that Jesus came to this earth to show us what God is like, and God is a healer, and God is a savior, and God is a helper. And, and, and he saw so many people come to salvation. He went to a prison, and they were all, you know, tattooed, you know, um, uh, what do you call it, gang tattoos and all. And, and they, he preached just a simple gospel like that and told them who Jesus is. You know, I, you know, I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. And, and he talked to them, and, and he gave an altar call, and prisoners were raising their hands to receive the Lord, and the security guards were raising their hands, with rifles raising their hands to receive Jesus. Amen? The people don't know who Jesus is, but once they can experience him and understand who he is, they're drawn to him. Amen? Because those, the folks here, no disrespect, they don't know what true salvation is. They don't know what peace is. There are many people on this planet today that are in bondage. And they know they're in bondage. 
but they have no alternative. They're, they're, they've never heard the gospel. And they don't know who Jesus is. So they don't know who love is. They don't know, you know, what he looks like. And they don't have to understand. So they're, they're just, you know, limited by, by their understanding. And God wants us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What's the gospel? Jesus. Amen? Jesus, the Savior of the world. Jesus has come. He has heard our cry. He's moved with compassion to bring help and healing and victory. And everywhere Jesus went in his earthly ministry, when they heard of Jesus, amen? When the woman with the issue of blood heard of Jesus, and she heard about him, what made him different from anybody else? She heard that he was healing. They heard that he proclaimed to be the son of God. They, they, he, she, they heard that he, he said he was the Messiah, the promised one. And she believed it. Amen? She was, she was convinced, and then she yielded. She said, I must touch the hem of his garment. I'm coming for him. Because he's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. Amen? And, and, you know, you just read the story. It says she'd been to many physicians. She spent everything she had. This was something that was, for years, she suffered with. All right? So she tried everything else. She'd been to every other uh, type of healer, so to speak. But the true living healer was on the planet. And everywhere he went, it says, and the sick came, and the lame, and the maimed, and, and, and he healed them all. Casting out devils. They weren't, nobody's been able to do that before. Medicate them. Go through the motions. But the Bible says that a stronger one has come. And who can destroy the working of a strong man unless the one who's stronger comes? Amen? So certainly men and women are not able to rise to that task. Remember the story of the seven sons of Sceva? They tried. In the name of Paul, who, you know, the Jesus that Paul preaches, they tried. And, and the demons inside that person said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? And they li literally tore them to pieces, beat, beat them. <clears throat> All right? It's, it's not a matter of, you know, what we can do. It's a matter of whose we are. Amen? The truth. Glory to God. And so uh, it, it's so amazing and wonderful uh, and confidence is so important that we not only place our confidence in God, and how do I, you know, Pastor Nick, help me, how do I build confidence in God? By spending time with Him. Amen? Spending time in the Word of God. Glory to God. Realizing that He is for you, not against you. That He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. Greater is He who is in you than He was in the world. That He conquered death. He conquered hell. He conquered uh, Satan. He stripped him of all that he was trusting in. And he says, now all authority is given unto me, and he gave it to you and to me. How do I know that I have all authority? Because he told me that I do. I don't feel like I do. It doesn't change the fact that you do. Amen? It's the truth. Hallelujah. I've said this before. How do you know you're saved? How do you know you're saved? You have a written document? You've got something, you know, what they call notarized and, and with a seal on it that says your salvation is guaranteed? No, my brothers and sisters, none of us do. But in another way of speaking, we all do. Amen? This is notarized by the Almighty. This has the stamp of God on it. And if you will listen to it and do what it says, everything in here belongs to you. By right of the blood. I'm covered by his blood. Amen? Hallelujah. And his love. Praise God forever. So, I ended last time talking to you about the wrestling. Ephesians chapter 6 says that we wrestle. And it's talking about we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers and all these other demonic presence that's around us. But as I've said before, there is a time and a place, and we might talk about that next. I'm going to pray about it and see what we're going to talk about next after these. 
But you know, we don't have to spend a lot of time as, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ who are living clean and who are doing uh, the best we can to walk with God. Amen? Nobody's perfect but one, but he, he, he's working perfection in us. The Bible says, you know, that in 2 Timothy, remember I said that, um, that the word of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness, that the man and woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So God is in the process of perfecting us. All right? Thank God for that. Hallelujah. But we're growing. And we're, we're working out our salvation with fear and trembling. Our souls are saved, but our our our, our, our soul, I'm sorry, our, our spirits are saved, but our mind, our will, and our emotions need to be transformed by the word of God. I don't know about you, but sometimes thoughts of failure come into my mind. And I thank God that all of a sudden it comes up with, don't make plans for failure. That's not who you are. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Don't make plans for compromise. That's not who you are. You're more than a conqueror. Well, who's talking? Jesus. Because I've spent time in the Word of God. You with me? But if you've not, if people have not spent time in the Word of God, then He's still going to do His best, but you're not going to recognize it. I recognize Him because He, you know, He brings me, He says, bring me remembrance of my word. He uses His word. Amen. Now, of course, remember when Jesus attempted the devil, the devil used the word too, but he twisted it. And Jesus used the word and, 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 and basically in its proper context. You know, if you are the son of God, turn this stone into, into bread. That's nothing more than a magic trick. And Jesus says to him, no, I don't get my direction from you. I get my direction from God. Amen? And he says, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And that's something we're going to have to build into each and every one of us. I don't get my direction horizontally. I'm not who you say I am. You're with me. Sometimes people put you in a box. They say, you know, this is who you are. You Don't you know you can't do that? Don't you know you're not smart enough or rich enough or young enough or old enough or this enough or that enough? That's what we're going to get on the earth. But what does God say? You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen? How many know that's the challenge? Is not to fix your mind or focus your mind on what that those other things are compromised. But to fix your eyes on the truth. Fix your eyes on the Lord. Amen? So wrestling, yes, of course I said wrestling, but I said this last week, and just to repeat, I'm trying to get further on, but it's so important that we get these points, is that the wrestling match is really not with the devil. And, and, and of course it's not with God. And, and truthfully, it's not with other people, even though other people may kind of stand in your way, if you understand what I mean. They, may, they might not be the greatest influence in your life. And um, by spending time with them, you know, you begin to pick up some of their traits. And that's why the Bible says, don't be unequally yoked. Amen? Uh, who you spend time with is very important because uh, as you spend time with God, he rubs off on you. But if you spend time with others who have other ways of thinking apart from the word of God, it's going to try to rub off on you. And, and the Bible says, who resists steadfastly, resists steadfastly steadfastly, because those things are coming after your confidence in God. Those thoughts, those, those, those um, philosophical and intellectual uh, things are, are all coming against God, because you don't understand God with your mind. Amen? It's a heart thing. It's a matter of the heart. You can't understand the ways of God with your mind. He says, my thoughts are higher. As far as the heavens are from the earth, my thoughts are higher. You can't possibly do it in your own understanding. The only way you can do it is by faith. I can think the thoughts of God. Yes, you can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You're going to have to take it by faith. You're going to have to simply believe that God made you that promise and that he will watch over that word to perform it. So you can say with total confidence, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And all the naysayers that says, you can't, I've never seen it done before, it's impossible, no way, no how, and all the rest of it, you basically will say, I'm, that, 
because it will not, it will not enter into my thought now. Amen? Because the Bible says, as a man or woman thinketh, so are they. So that's why renew your mind. Transform your mind by the renewing of the word. Because if we think that we can't, we can't. Even though God says we can, if we think we can't, we can't. If God says you're healed, but you give more credit to whatever's come against you, then you'll stay sick. Even though healing has been made available. Amen? Because how do you receive healing? By faith. Amen? It's a spiritual thing. Because of, all, because of your love walk with love himself. Part of that, that expression of love is healing. And so you declare, Lord, I'm so thankful that by your stripes, I was healed. I don't have to try to get it. I don't have to wrestle it from the devil. I don't have to, you know, uh, wait till it happens before I believe it. I believe it because you said it. Amen? And, and your word is more real to me, more relevant, more powerful than any sickness or disease or symptoms. Amen? One of my instructors used to say to us that if the Bible says you're healed, and you still have symptoms, those are lies sent from hell to get your focus off of God and to, and to settle for what the devil's trying to give to you. So you say, no, 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 you are a lying symptom. Do you feel symptoms? Yeah, you're not denying the symptoms. I have pain in my stomach or whatever the case may be. What you're saying is that the stripes of the Lord Jesus was more than enough to bring healing and health and deliverance to me in the name of Jesus. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, again, those who would attempt to make you uh, lose confidence in God, who he is and what he's like, the battle forces trying to get you to walk by sight and not by faith. Third, Second Corinthians, we read, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Forces trying to get you to cast away your confidence or back off your trust. Or let go of your faith. Amen? This is called the battle. Hallelujah. And, and um, um, Joyce Meyer uh, has uh, done a wonderful job with this. Um, one of her most popular books and teachings, The Battlefield is the Mind. And it, and it is because that's what the Word of God says. Amen? And it's our motto of Scripture. Don't be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your walk, of your mind. Mm -hmm. Amen? So that you say what God says. Your spirit's willing. Your flesh, you're going to have to, you know, put it under. Because it wants to do what it wants to do. The easy way out, usually. But to your flesh, you know, when you come to a crossroad in your life, and one hill, one goes up and one goes down, your flesh will always want to go down. Always. Does have no idea that down for about, you know, half a mile and then straight up. That's how the devil operates. And this one, it goes up, it goes up, but then all of a sudden it levels out. And it may have a few ups and a few downs, but it's pretty, and, and how many of you can't go by what you think? Because your flesh wants to do the easy way. But God says, no, no, you have to mortify your flesh. In other words, you've got to put it to death. It cannot dominate you. It's very dangerous when the flesh, which is, you know, the, the mind, the will, the emotions, your, 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 the lust, the Bible talks about we're going away by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. We, we have to, you know, get a hold of those things. It says, I will, I will only uh, focus my eyes on Jesus. I will only hear what the word of God says. That That is my guide. He is my guide. Not that. He is my guide. He is my captain. He is my savior. He is my Lord. Amen. He is my deliverer. It's all about Jesus. Are you with me, my brothers and sisters? Amen. And the Bible says faith in Jesus is the victory that overcomes the world. Amen. It's not just faith. Faith in Jesus. Faith in the word of God. I told you, Jesus is the Word of God made flesh. So when you're spending time in the Word of God, you're spending time with Jesus. Amen? And it's very hard to spend time with Jesus without spending time in the Word of God. 
because you know I've been doing this for a very long time and there are a lot of people that want to say no not you but a lot of people I've heard say I spend a lot of time with Jesus but they don't go with the word of God so the Jesus that they're hearing is not the spirit of God amen they think they're developing a relationship with Jesus but it's purely emotional and therefore subject to all kinds of influences Amen? The only thing that makes you stable in life is your faith in God. Because otherwise, right? The Bible warns us that if we base our life on the Word of God, amen, we build our foundation on the Lord Jesus, when the storms of life comes, we'll still be standing. Because we've built our life on the rock. The rock is a person, not not uh, Dwayne Johnson. All right, the rock is the person. His name is Jesus. Amen. Yeah, praise God. But then it warns us that if you base your life on anything else, it's shifting sand. Another word says quicksand. And he says, when the storms of life come and the, and the trials of life come, great will be the fall of that house. So, you know, we wrestle against ourselves, basically. We wrestle, we wrestle against ourselves. And, and, and God wants us to, us to be the best you we can be. And so it's going to be a matter of spending time with him, trusting him, and saying what he says, allowing what, his, what the pictures that he's painting from his word, I am more than a conqueror. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God forever. Glory to God. Let that be the focus of our hearts. Glory to God. Amen. Turn with me to um, final scripture, James chapter 2, verse 19. We'll pick up from here next time. And um, because I have another message, a little different, but we're going to continue. I was hoping to start it today, but uh, we'll get there. Amen. James chapter 2 and verse 19. You know, Satan is convinced. Did you know that? Satan is convinced that God is God, that Jesus is Lord. But he's not, and he never will yield. He's not, and he never will yield. Are you listening? James chapter 2, verse um, 14. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yes, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without my works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? And then it says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seeth thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Do you understand? Amen? So faith in Jesus will cause you to act like Jesus, to think like Jesus, to speak like Jesus, to react like Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. A, a true transformed heart, when, when love, who is a person, comes into a, a human being, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Now we have the supernatural capacity to love other people. And we're to do so. Because that's what, that's what Jesus said. 
What's the first commandment? Love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And next, love your neighbor as you love yourself. When Jesus returns, the Bible says, when the Lord returns, will he find faith in the earth? And he's not talking about this ethereal force, this somehow supernatural, you know, thing. He's talking about the results of transformed lives, leaving an impression in the world. You are, we talked about it. You are salt, you are light. We're not to hide our bushel. We're to let it shine so that people might see our good works and glorify God. Amen? So what's important to God is that we do the works of Jesus. We find somebody who's hurting, we do everything we can to help them. We find somebody who's lonely, we do everything we can to help them. We find somebody who needs, uh, you know, assistance, we do what we can. You know, we're not necessarily called to do it all. But together we can do a lot. Are you with me? Yeah. You don't have to have to feel bondage. You know, you come across somebody who says, you know, I need, you know, uh, this amount of money to keep my lights on or whatever. And you, you don't have that kind of money. It's all right to say to him, you know what, I don't have enough for the full amount. But first of all, I'm going to give you something towards it. But then I'm going to pray with you. Amen? That not only does, does God supply this need, but that you would come to the state of knowledge of him yourself. So that you learn how to receive from God. Are you with me? I, I go back to it. I said years ago because we ran a food pantry, Miss Karen and I. And um, um, you remember the expression: "You give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. You teach him to fish, you feed him for the rest of his life." And that's what we're called to do. Not just you know. It's, it's easy to say, "Well, here, here's five dollars. Here's ten dollars. Here's hundred dollars. Whatever." It's more important that we that we teach them how to fish for themselves. Amen. When we, we ran the food pantry, Miss um, Karen and I um, and Pastor John and the staff at the church, we made a commitment that we were not a delivery service. We weren't just going to make up food baskets and hand it to people when they came. It was required of them to sit down when they came in, and we were going to find out where they were in their faith and do our best to share the gospel with them, not force it down their throats, but to present it in a way that is loving and compassionate that they might have the opportunity to receive. And we had some people leave and, and not really want it. And, um, but if they came back, they, they received it again. We had a lot of people say, you know, I never heard this before. And, and they received it. And we saw marvelous healings and miracles. We, we uh, um, Ms. Sonia was our Spanish interpreter, anointed by God, God bless her. And I had a lady come in who was uh, deaf and blind and uh, prayed for her. Ms. Uh, Sonia interpreted to her and she started screaming. I'm telling you, screaming. Pastor John came running down from upstairs. What in the world is going on? And the lady says, I can see. I can see. I can see. I can see. I can hear. I can hear. Amen? Through a humble ministry called Loaves and Fishes, helping feed the poor, basically. But we have made that commitment that we're going to, you know, love on people. We're going to do our best to help them to receive Jesus and not only become a grocery, uh, you know, delivery service, but the true need of people is, is Jesus. He's the need. Amen? What do people need more than anything else on this planet? They need Jesus. Amen? So, Father, we thank you so much for the time that we're able to spend together in your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Total surrender, my brothers and sisters. That's what it's about. And we get to the point where we make up our mind that I surrender all. It's the best place to be. It's the safest place to be. It's the place that God is calling every single one of us. Amen? Total surrender, obedience, hallelujah, immovable, unyielding faith in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can only answer this question yourself. I can't answer it for you. I believe I know the people that are here today. 
but those that are watching, those that are have participated with us through uh, Facebook and YouTube, you know, how about you? Not only do you know, not only are you convinced, but are you yielding? Amen? Have you yielded, and are you yielding continually? Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. There was a song that was popular years ago, an old hymn of the church, Trust and Obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Amen? We love you. We appreciate you. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for the opportunity. And I just humbly submit that if there are any here that are under the sound of my voice, either live or later down, that have never uh, acknowledged and never yielded to the presence of God, Jesus knocking on their hearts, wanting entrance, has done everything for their salvation and our salvation, has paid the ultimate price to bring abundant, eternal life to us, victory, health, healing, strength, and deliverance from the powers of darkness. If there's anyone today that would say, I believe those things, I've heard them before, but I've never embraced him. I've never asked Jesus to be my Savior and the Lord of my life. And I do that today by faith. I may not have goosebumps. I may not fall down under the power of God, and there's nothing wrong with those things, but it's not a feeling. It's believing Him. Believing a person who cannot lie, who is perfect in all of His ways, who is righteous altogether. And we declare, I believe you, Jesus. Please, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And I will live for you. I will spend time with you in your word. My mind will be transformed. And as my mind is transformed, the way I think, the way I speak, the way I act, the way I react, what I expect, and what I do will all bring honor and glory to you. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. And I give you praise. And I thank you so much for hearing me and saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. If anybody does respond to that online, you can always send us an email. You can uh, give us a message through Facebook, whatever is convenient for you. All of our contact information is on our website, www.flffaithfellowship.com. And uh, there you can get a hold of us, let us know. We'll send you paperwork, we'll send you booklets, we'll do whatever we can to help you, uh, not only to get your get moving, but to stay. Um, moving forward to the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray one more time. And, and Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your blessing. We ask as always, traveling mercies, as we return to our homes, that our homes would be so blessed. And that, Lord, we would spend the rest of today talking about how good you are, how great you are, how wonderful you are. And we honor you, we praise you, we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you.